Hey guys, Andrew here from Nightwalker Gear. Today we are going to look at the new Nightcore HC65 UHE. Right, how it stacks up against other headlamps and the key design features that makes this the best professional level headlamp to come out of Nightcore to date. Before we begin, if you want to win this latest HC65 UHE, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Comment below on what headlamp you are using now and if this will be a better fit. Right, once we pick 500 likes, I'll pick one winner and announce them in the description box below. Also, congrats to Diablo M Advance in Malaysia for winning the previous EDC35 giveaway. So let's start with the biggest question. There are so many types of headlamps out there, just like flashlights, each one designed to fit a specific use case. So where does the HC65 UHE fit? We have the tiny ones here for ultralight runners and weekend campers, right, to heavier outdoor hiking and tracking here all the way to the serious search and rescue types with external power packs here. Right, you can see the unit is here with the battery pack here. So the difference from here all the way to here is weight, brightness and run time. Right, the smaller the headlamp, the smaller the battery. Smaller batteries are not powerful enough to support high brightness. So even if it can, there's not enough run time as you'll burn through the battery pretty quickly. Then if you put a really big battery in there like this, it becomes too heavy and you, and you have to mount them to helmets or run external battery packs like these. Right, so across all brands, you'll see this universal pattern. It's just physics, weight, brightness, run time. It's a triangle. You can only pick two. So no, until we have a new battery breakthrough, there's no way to have an ultra light headlamp that does 5,000 lumens and runs for days, right? It's just not possible yet. The HC65 UHE sits somewhere here, right? In between outdoor professional to search and rescue. This is actually the fourth generation of the HC65 series. Started with the HC60 here, right? HC65, HC65 V2, and now the HC65 UHE. That means they've continually included all the best features from the different models throughout the years. That's why it stands out as one of the best headlamps money can buy today, and I'll show you exactly why. The obvious new feature is the eight LEDs covering the entire face of the headlamp. Early versions only had one, then they gradually added more and more types, uh, high CRI LEDs for close-up work, right? red LEDs, spot beams that help you see far, and flat LEDs that help you see wide. Right? Then eventually we got to the point where, why not we just fill up the whole front plate with LEDs? But does adding more LEDs make it better? The answer is yes. For the HC68 and the older HC65, right? to get a turbo 2000 lumens, one LED has to do a lot of work, generating a massive amount of heat, sometimes even melting the front cover. So is this one example of a turn set where the LED got so hot that the front lens has melted through. But with 8 LEDs to maintain 2000 lumens, each LED only needs to do 250 lumens. Right? That means it generates less heat, runs more efficiently over the years, and even if one LED dies on the field, you still have 7 that still work. Combined with the full metal build, heat dissipation is way better compared to plastic builds. Right? These ridges on the back here are adjustment clicks. Right, but they also double the surface area of the light to keep things cool. Right? This is a very clever design. But wait, there's more LEDs. There are two high CRI LEDs in there for close-up work. So what are high CRI LEDs? They mimic the color tone of sunlight and are often used in high-end car workshops where they spot tiny scratches in paint, in museum curation and documentation work where color accuracy is important. So if you use it outdoors, the leaves will look greener, right? Maps will show better colors. If you use it for medical purposes, you can tell apart purple from blue easier, right? Red from orange if you are dealing with uh, electrical wires. Red LEDs are in there as well in high, low and flashing modes. So why have red lights in a headlamp? Right? It doesn't attract bugs like white light does. If you want to stay discreet, red is the least visible from afar and it preserves your night vision. If you are navigating on moonlight alone, you can pop the red light here to check your map or compass. Once you're done, pop it back off and your natural night vision won't be affected. If you go from moonlit to white light like this, right, you'll be blinded. And once you turn it off, it takes a while before your eyes can adjust to darkness again. So that's what it means when they say red light preserves your night vision. Red flashing is another very useful thing to have. Remove it from the mount like this, and you can leave it anywhere for marking out areas or warning others, right? The red light lasts well over 40 hours, so you don't have to worry about it draining your battery. For more serious emergencies, you can switch to the 1300 lumen SOS, which is what is going on now, three long, three short, or the slow blink 
beacon modes, which is this. So you can see it's slow blink. This is 1,300 lumens. So in terms of runtime, real world use, right? Not just chasing numbers. 100 lumens is good enough for simple trail hikes and path finding. It runs for 31 hours on that. Bump it up to 400 lumens if you're jogging at a faster pace. This lasts 14 hours. In general, the faster you're moving, the further ahead you need to see to avoid or spot dangers. So there's really no point in walking around on full brightness 2,000 lumens all the time. It'll just be a waste of lumens because you can't move fast enough to cover the ground that you can see. Real world use would be to use turbo, that's double tap, right, to cover wide areas. Then spot where you need to go, then drop back down to 400 lumens or wherever you were before to get to your next area, then turbo again to survey the area. Right, that's the most efficient way. So how long does the turbo last? It gradually dims from 2,000 lumens to 1,300 lumens over three to five minutes then gradually to 400 lumens over an hour. Right, that's where it holds stable. Now you realize this is a gradual dimming system, so it helps your eyes adjust over time. For other headlamps, there's a visible step down. Right, to me, this gradual dimming is a welcome change. I'm not particular about always having it at certain brightness levels. Right, what matters is the headlamp helps your eyes comfortably adjust to darkness. So now that we got the LEDs out of the way, let's tackle the two most important things when buying headlamps, which is comfort and ease of use. Because this is always going to be on your head for extended periods of time, how comfortable it feels is very important. So these new wide breathable bands are comfortable to wear with just the right amount of tension. Right, silicone strips at the front help the light stay in place on your skin or fabric or helmet. Optional top strap here helps if you are doing more intense movements like running through an optical course. Right, it prevents the headlamp from dropping downwards. If you are just walking or trekking, going without a top strap is just fine. Pro tip, I always recommend a head wear or some kind to use with your headlamp so there's less irritation and it absorbs the sweat. Okay, a beanie or a reverse cap is just fine as well. Some clients are fine with wearing it just bare. So everyone has different comfort levels. The heavier the headlamp, the more irritation you get. The next most important bit, ease of use. The most basic function that seems to be the most difficult to get right is the angle adjustment. And this new HC65, UHE does it amazingly well. Okay, so clear clicking adjustments, left or right adjustments, doesn't matter, gives you great tactile feedback and it holds the angle as soon as you let go. One of the problems when moving around in groups with headlamps is everyone keeps blinding everyone. So one instance would be if you call to me and then I turn and then you immediately get blinded because I didn't adjust my headlamp. With this, if you call me, all I gotta do is twist up. Yes, what's up? Once we're done, twist down and you are on your way, right? It's very easy. Lights like the NU or UT series can only face down, right? They cannot face up. So you end up pointing down and this will blind your own eyes, right? And other versions like the HC68 are pain to twist up and down because these are rubber mounts, right? It's the hold is very tight for me to twist up or down and I end up having to use two hands to adjust. I can't just hold one and turn on, the, on my head because it's going to move the whole band. Plastic mounts last longer as the rubber ones will flake or crack over time depending on your climate. So my favorite part of course, you can pull the whole headlamp out and use it as a table stand work light. Right? Just like this. You can direct it however you want. Controls, the different size and textured buttons help you tell apart the mode button from the power button without looking. So you can feel what you'll trigger by just touching the top, right? The bumpy one will be the on-off, the circular one will be the mode button. Compared to lights like this where both the top buttons are the same, you'll probably press the wrong button at the wrong time, right? They both feel the same, you don't know which is on or off, which is mode change. And I know I did, I did press the wrong buttons on these kind of headlamps before. Recharging, compared to the HC68, you had to unscrew a lot just to access the hidden USB-C port here. Where is it? Where is it? There. Uh, I'm still turning it. There. Okay, now it's completely reviewed, then you can plug it in. The HC65 USB-C port is just here on a big flap. There. And you can access it with a huge rubber flap cover. Now this flap cover is not the tiny ones that just pop on and then if you rub on it, it just snap off, right? No, this is a very big and thick cover that's gonna stay on for quite a bit. They've also taken the four LED charging indicator from the EDC35 series, right? It lights up, then if you press here, you can see the four 
blue LED lights up as well so you know exactly when you need to recharge. It's so much easier than those old dim LED lights under the power button that double as battery indicators. So recharging speed, it goes from zero to full in just two hours. Insanely fast for the 4000mAh removable battery. You also realize this can be used while charging. That means you can run this with a 10,000mAh power bank like the Carbo 10K here, all carbon fiber, right? Run the cable with guides to a backpack and you have runtime for days. You can't turbo while charging, but you can use it from mid to high brightness. Right, this expands the usage to longer tasks if you're working in tunnels all day. Or you can just bring more 18650 batteries along to swap out on the fly. So no built-in batteries here. Compact carry case is also included. You can hold two fully charged batteries here, extending your use by a whole lot. It's smaller than it looks, just like that, and it does help to keep all your straps and cables tidy. It's pro tip on charging, you can now leave the straps on your helmet and thus detach the unit for charging at the charging bay at the end of your shift. So you don't have to bring the helmet around and readjust every time you have to charge. Ways to wear, this is waterproof, so you can leave it on your helmet rain or shine, you track in the rain, use it as a warning beacon outside your campsite in the rain, right? No problem. Compared to other headlamps, this is IP68 rated, so it's submersible down to 2 meters. Skinning is also easy, everything is removable. From the headlamp, the bracket to all the different straps, right? right? These can be easily removed, so here's how you do it. Just on the edge, push it down, look for the notch out, and you're done, right? The same with this side. Pull down, up and you can wash everything separately. Right, many of the guys struggle with sweaty headbands, so I can never understand why some brands design non-removable bands, right? It's just silly. Here you can remove the top strap, the headband, the unit, everything. And there you have it, the main reasons why the HC65 UHE is one of the best performing professional level headlamps money can buy today. The 8 LEDs run cooler, the CRI light, the red light, amazing adjustments. Right, clever controls and ease of taking apart everything to recharge, clean or replace. Fine with the ability to swap out batteries and use it while charging a power bank, this is an incredible upgrade to most of the headlamps out today. So should you buy a H65 UHE? Remember where this sits on in the product range, right? It's on the outdoor professional level use. So if you're looking for a running headlamp, right? This is not for you, it's too heavy. If you're looking for a heavy duty flat headlamp that can be used for work and serious adventure, this is the best one to get now. They're all in stock now at nightcallites.com slash hc65uhe. To order direct from us today, you also get a free NU06LE beacon light which attaches to the back of the strap or your persons, right? For even more visibility. I only have 30 sets of this in this combination. Once it's sold out, we wouldn't have this bundle anymore. So once your order is placed, you'll correct everything to your door within a couple of days. Link to order is in the description below. We do ship worldwide via DHL and as usual, this comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee and fast free 3-year warranty so there's no risk at all. That's it. If you'd like to see more videos like this where we help you choose the best lights for your work or adventure, subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Right? MJ signing out.